All right, shalom again, Rastafari. Okay, let's get into this area of um, scripture right here. Now, what we what we want to do is show a couple of um, okay, we're searching here some some graphics. This will be the more graphic version, um, I, even summary summarizing on what we've already spoken on with the so-called um, Illuminati eye or the evil eye the evil eye now what the scriptures teach us and let's go back to the scripture this, all these ones and ones here if you look at them and this is a perfect collage right here this collage of these so-called bankers and 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 banking houses and this is basically how they did it with their with their system and having the world bow to their particular system, their world ruling system and it's all about that dollar bill. That dollar bill is still the strongest magic, even though people know that there's a lot of unknowns that they don't know, there's still a a kind of a blind faith. It reminds me of what Morpheus says in the Matrix. The people are so inert. They're not active. You understand? They're so inert. They're, they're, they're hopelessly, or one can even say helplessly, and hopelessly too, because they don't have any true hope. They're hopelessly dependent upon the system. The system that these present ones are the latter days inheritors of this Babylon, what we call the Babylon Matrix. Mm. Now, if you look, there's, there's the eye. Again, now this also connects with the whole issue of the black nobility. And we want to touch a little more on the order of the garter and that whole connection. And also connects with Georgis, St. George. He was a He's a patron saint, but also, you have to remember, he was a knight. Remember, even Huarte Apollos, Paul speaks about put on the full armor. Ones have thought that this was just speaking um, spiritually, but it wasn't just speaking spiritually, where Christ says, sell your garments and buy swords. He, he wasn't just speaking spiritually. You understand? Remember the tripartite we're made in the image of God in spirit, soul, and body. Keep that in mind, Thessalonians. Okay, so in the center of this is this symbol. Now, when we go to the scriptures, and we wanted to highlight this and actually show you, break it down for you in the scripture, what we said is that the so-called evil eye or the Illuminati eye is in the Bible. It actually mentions it. It mentions that this is the symbol Right, this is their symbol in the whole earth. So let's go to um, Zacharias. Right, let's go to Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah. So here we at we click on Zacharias, chapter five. Let's center this right here, chapter five. Right, chapter five, and now let us go down to verse five. The main verse is verse five. And let's read verse um, 6, 5 and 6. Okay, so we're at Zacharias chapter 5, verse 6. And here we are. Um, let's get the pointer right here. Okay, so it says, And I said, What is it? So this is Zacharias saying, In name, Mindernat. What is, notice this, Bamarinya. This is na t, na t, min d r, minder nat, e name, e name, and I, minder nat, alehu, alehu, and I said, what is it? In other words, what is she? This is the key right here. What is she? So this is something you don't have in the King James because here, what is it? There's it's not gender. There's no gender specification, and this is what also confuses a lot of the gender-based issues because the language itself. Remember, in the beginning is the word, but if the word is not with God, such as this particular language, certain confusions can be bred into the system of things, but. So it says, Mindernat Allahu. Arsum, 
and he you hitch another this is this is feminine right here it's not you not this he but you hitch which is this she yeah mit yeah mit what all yeah if mess feria not alain this that which she who comes out yeah mit what all she who 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 springs out, who comes out, you can even say in a sense who emanates on a certain level, yeah if yeah if this is the afa, this she is the afa that goeth forth. Ye hitch ye mitter what al ye if mesarianat aling. Degmon the midder hululai yale bedalacho yihino ale. He said, moreover, degmom, and also, and also, he said, the moreover, and also, degmom, the midr hululai yale, that which is above or upon the whole earth, bedalacho. This is the key. This is the royal Amharic, the Metz of Kedus of Nugusinagas Turgum. This is the book of the Seven Seals. This is Majesty's Bible from the ancient Ethiopic manuscripts. It's talking about Judaism, original Judaism, between 2,600 to 3,000 years plus old. All right? Just, just understand that when you hear this whole foolish debate about about whether whether the Ethiopian Jews, the Beta Israel, or the Falashas of the East are truly Jewish. You see, that's a racist, white supremacist argument there. The evidence speaks for itself. But here it says, and moreover, and he said moreover, and also he said this is their resemblance. Now, the word that you see right here, resemblance, this is the key. This is where most folks miss it. They see resemblance. So, of course, they're going to think of all the things they're going to think of when they look at a resemblance. Let's go a little bit deeper. So, we're going to click right here on the 6, right? And we're going to go into, right here, you see, here's the Royal Amharic, the Metzhaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, the Royal Amharic. There's the KJV, the King James Version. And now, da down here is the Strong's, the King James Version with the Strong's numbers, the strong, um, Strong's concordance, right? Now, when we click on the word resemblance, you see down here is 5869, 5869. When we click on that, here's the word that we find right here. Let's bring this center. You see, here's the word for 56, 5869, the Hebrew 5869, is ayin, 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 right? The ayin, which is the eye. It says probably, here's, here's what Strong's wrote about it. He said probably a primitive word. Probably. Well, of course, it is a primitive or Afro-Semitic or in its rootage, Ethiopic word. It says an eye, literally or figuratively. So this is what it was. Says this is their eye. The Hebrew te teaches us this is their eye. If you look into the Naveen of the Minor Prophets, the Naveen um, of the, the the with the footnotes, the references, the the Jewish um, prophets, in the words, the Jewish version of it, you will see. And we also have that as well that we'll probably show just to bring all the the pieces of evidence to make the case that this particular verse here that we have in Zephaniah 5, 6, when it is read or reread and interpreted correctly, King James misinterprets it or uh, clearly he misses the mark. Cause the, but, of course, that might have been odd to some, perhaps, or perhaps it was a cover-up. We cannot really tell. What we can tell is that the word resemblance found in Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6, is really I. So saying this is their I throughout all the earth, right? And now when we take a look at this particular picture, we can see this is their I. You see, this is their I. Where's their I on their dollar? Love of money, you see the connection? This is their I 
throughout the entire earth. This is their, this is their, this is their eye throughout the entire earth. Not just resemblance, my people, but this is their eye. Now, in our earlier vid, we, we kind of did this to try to bring attention to this. Now, in the Ethiopic, in the Ethiopian, in our Ethiopian tradition, the Ethiopian Hebrew tradition, they have a particular type of evil, malignant spirit, which they call the evil eye, but they call it the Buddha, the Buddha oin, the Buddha oin. Now, don't get it twisted with Buddha in India, you understand? But the Buddha oin. It's probably more to that, of course. But the Buddha oin, so they call this the evil eye. And there's and there's a lot of um, a lot of protective Christian and even Judaic, we could say, magic concerning the evil eye to protect one from the influence of this. Now, we've been told that this is Egyptian because we see that they also use, you understand, the so-called Egyptian eye or the eye of Horus. But I I'm here to declare to you. And and the evidence is, 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 is there, you understand, to prove this point that this particular eye, let's get a, a further close-up of it. This particular eye and this sort of symbol, whenever you see the so-called triangle, this the, the Egyptian eye and the triangle, you're looking at a modern forgery. In other words, you're going to look at a modern forgery. You understand? So when you see the whole Egyptian thing, because in ancient Egypt, the oldest tradition of the ancient Egyptians, there wasn't just one eye, and there's almost never an eye in a triangle, as you see in a lot of a lot of knockoff, counterfeit Egyptian modern art for those who are into it was the fad, the Egyptian fad, where you see the the Egyptian eye within the triangle. That is strictly a non-native um, tradition or Oh, that's a cult. Even in ancient Egypt, it was in the sense of a cult that it was not the true black Egyptian culture, not the native Egyptian culture. So all that, all that um, um, triangle eye and stuff with the so-called Egyptian pyramid, that's strictly a modern thing. But now there's two things that need to be under understood here. One is the Afa or the Eif. You understand? And if you look into Egyptian um, um, wall um, paintings and monuments, on the monuments you will see that they often carry these cones, these offering cones that the Egyptians carry in some of the wall paintings. And these are called offerings, but they're also called the hetep, you understand? which is also the grain offering, the hetep or the hept, the hept or the hetep offering, the grain offerings. So this shape right here connotates the eif or the ephra, the ephra, right? Then it speaks about this is their what? This is their oin. Let's, let's go into the, the Strong's concordance again right here. And let's see what else Strong has to say about this. He says it's an eye, literally or figuratively. So that's what we have there. By analogy, by analogy, fountain, because in the Hebrew we have in, the in, which is interesting, the in, as the hin, which is the liquid measurement, about two gallons, but we have the in, which is a fountain. It's a fountain. It's very interesting putting that together. So we both have oin as the eye and oin as a fountain, as the eye of the landscape the eye of the landscape. So think about the landscape and a real estate and how most of us do not own or do not have our land, how we, how we are landless. You understand? And we find those who are behind the, the stealing of the land are those who are also behind that resemblance. You see the Illuminati resemblance. So now it tells us, notice this as we go further, affliction. Outward appearance before think best color conceit to be content countenance displeased eye eyebrowed eyebrowed eyesight um, eyed in that sense face 
favor, fountain, furrow, margin, ex him plus humble. So as you keep breaking it down, you see different senses. Now, where does resemblance shows up? We see resemblance way down here. So when they translate this verse over here in Zechariah 5 and 6, they went through all these. They were familiar with the translators. The original King James translators, we have to look at the William Tyndall version. William Tyndall, we should really give more credit to him than so-called King James. You understand? But if you notice where it appears, it appears um, almost next to last. Here we get it almost next to last. While the first one, the very first and the root in the majority of of places in the Hebrew Bible that you find oin, it usually refers to an I. Secondarily, most popular, it refers to a fountain. And then we have these other metaphorical senses. So the translator translated this here in Zechariah chapter 5 and 6 in a so-called um, figurative sense. Yet if you use the basic root word, it would have been more clear and more of us could actually see. You understand? Could actually see what the real biblical, scriptural, prophetic um, relevance of this symbol, the ease and the oin. The eef and the oin. Now, it's a little bit deeper than just that. Because even when, when, when we went through the, the, the previous vids on this, and we said that we wanted to also kind of show you some of these pictures, because when you get to see some of these pictures and these examples, it kind of helps to bring the teaching, you know, to bring the teaching all together. You know what I'm saying? It brings the teaching all together. And, and there's... There's a lot of this out there on the internet. Many of you all have seen it in a bunch of videos, which basically show you the different versions of this. But it's very clear that if there's any symbol that is their symbol, you understand? Know and this woman, notice it says, what is it? In other words, who is she? Let's see if we have this here, even though we will probably want to go back to this as well. Um, but let's see if we have... That picture of, um, let's see if we have this picture of little Kim. I don't know if we have this on this drive right here or not. But there's this picture of little Kim. And I think they also splice it and put, um, who is the other so-called entertainer? They put, um, um, Nicki Minaj or whatever. They put her there. Almost like she is the new you know, she, she is the new little Kim. Remember that famous, that famous poster, you know, that I remember it was up in Harlem. I went to Harlem one time. I saw it up there, big old billboard with this woman skinning out. And what I noticed about it, somewhat seeing it artistically, that it was, um, the, the, the shape was triangular. Now, the video, oh, here we go. Here we go right here. You see? Here we're going to select this, bring this up. Now we can even better, um, all right, here we go. You see this right here? Now, notice the triangularity of this. See, it, it was shock ones that these two things go together. These two, this is a high level of occultic but an ancient magic. These two things actually go together. You know what I'm saying? You have to remember the woman, that, that woman uh, of the two, male and female, the woman that really germinates, she gives birth. You know what I'm saying? She gives birth. This is very, very important. And even if she doesn't give physical birth, she has that power, that root natural energy. So now it's like looking at the Eastern Star symbol, which is a five-pointed star. And everyone knows that a five-pointed star upright has good influences, but when it's turned upside down. So this is turning upside down the true God-given nature of it and creating an artificial product or a byproduct. And this is now how this image, you know what I'm saying, is being used and, and has been so successful when we look at the deterioration of, of what, what little morality that black people in a sense, had post-traumatic 
slave, slick, woolly lynchism here in the Maracacas. So now, when we now go back to this particular scripture right here, now what we wanted to do was actually, um, let's see if we can open this up, Zechariah here, to use this particular um, version of it. This is the word programming, and let's go to Zechariah chapter, what well, we chapter five. So let's click on chapter five. And then, for those, some of y'all said you've been utilizing this program. Let's bring it down here so you can see this right here. You see, I'm going up to Tools, right? And is it Tools? Yeah, I'm going to Tools, and I'm going to click on Bible View Options. Right? When you click on Bible View Options, you go right here where it has Strong's Numbers, right? And when you click on Strong's Number, you click on where, right here, the box. You check on the box where it says Show Strong's Numbers. So I clicked OK, right? Or I clicked there, and I'm going to click OK right here. And then you'll see that it has these numbers here, which are next, and I turned. So you can look up Shub, right, and lift it up, right? And you have Nasa, which is interesting. Nasa means lift it up. Notice that Nasa. You see right here, Nasa means lift it up. You know, um, let's click on it, and you'll see it in the bottom part. You see it down there? It just came in Nasa to lift up. It's a great variety of applications. This present Torah portion is Naso, right? So that's how you can bring in to effect the um, Strong's the Strong's reference. So let's bring it up this way and describe it this way. We can even show you the Hebrew letters, all right? So so here we go right here. So we have and I said, right? And I said Amar, you know. And I said, what is it? And he said, and and he said, right? He Amar, he said, this is the Afa, this is the Afa, and this is, Afa is a measure, it, it, is a measure for grain, but it, it, it's referred to measure in general. This is a very good, right here, how they have this it says of Egyptian derivation. Notice this. I don't know if you can see this very clear, but it says down here that this word Eif. In the Amharic is Eve, here is Apha. They say it is of Egyptian derivation. In King James Version, it's used for Epha or Epha, um, divers, like divers measures, like to have, when it says divers measure, when talking about measurement. Now, let's just go forward. So that word is of Egyptian derivation. So as you study this, they'll tell you this, or you'll see this for yourself. This is he said. Now, Here's the word right here. It says oin. Once again, we have the very same thing. And when you look through all the, all the definitions, down here it says resemblance. So you see right here, down here it says resemblance. The primary two, notice right here, this simplifies it. The, the Mickelson's Enhanced Strong's Greek and Hebrew Dictionaries of the H5869 simplifies as one and two. Notice, and I, literally or figuratively, secondly, secondarily, by analogy, right, in a symbolic kind of sense, what I call verbal hieroglyphic sense, it means a fountain, a fountain, as in or oin, in, as the eye of the landscape. So the eye, the oin in the Hebrew, both refers to the eye, the literal eye, but also by analogy, it refers to a fountain. So we're looking at, like in ancient Egypt, we're seeing the eye, like the, the, the eye of the eyes of, of Osiris or Osar or the left and right eye. You see those pictures in the coffin text, especially in, in, in that particular, the earliest time that they're able to have preserve archaeology for. And we see these eyes, and people are like, oh, that's Illuminati eye, that's Illuminati, 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 Illuminati. No, no, no. What they did was take this, and just like they've done with the five-pointed star, and flip it. And in that flip is the creation of that magic, which, which gives them the, the groundation for the magic and other occultic influences. But now if we would go on, right, if we would go on in this particular, and let's just show you the, the word in the, in the 
in the Hebrew. Really, it says, Ainam, Ainam, Ainam. So it says, uh, one level is eyes. It seems to say eyes in the plural sense. But really, it's a plurality. That's why they have many different forms of this. If we were to look up Illuminati eye and how they look at the logos. You see, so it both means I and the singularity, but here the I nam is referring to the plural eyes because there's many different kinds of these logos where it's basically still the same people. It's the same people behind all these different products, all these different channels, all these different so forth and so on, and, you know, which, which is part of this, you know, it's who is projecting this image. Remember the children of Israel? I think we're going to read about it in this Torah portion in Numbers. Um, you remember when um, Balaam is going to come to try to curse them? Balaam is your pimp, is your prosperity pimps and your preachers. You understand your preachers and your pastors of 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 of, of the of the false counterfeit gospel that tells black folks that they are Gentiles and still telling them that they're the lost sheep of the Beit Israel. You remember Balaam? Balaam could not curse the people, even though his his master, the one who hired him, wanted him to curse Balak. You understand? Wanted him to t curse the people. He could not. But he had to bless the people instead. But then he came up with an idea. He said, all right, you know what? If we can demoralize them, I want you to get this. If we can demoralize them and believe it or not, like it or not, this is one of the main ways, you understand, and through one of the main mediums that black people have been demoralized. Therefore, remember the Beit Israel going to the wilderness? They first had to be demoralized. If they, could, if they would break covenant, you understand, and go after and So they used the Moabites. I wanted to touch on the fact that, you know, um, yeah, Moorish, Moabite, yeah, there's, there's some Moabites out there, but there's some Moabites that don't know the law, that are totally lawless Moabites, and they use these Moabite women to basically seduce the Israelitish men. Notice what's going on nowadays in, in black society, so to speak. So society. You understand? They demoralize them. We got the strip joints, we got the prostitution. You know, I mean this thing is so very in a sense deep, but it's so it is a there's a simplicity to it. It still comes down to those basic choices. You know, those fundamental choices. You know what I'm saying? So they use these sort of women, this is sort of image, this is seduce this is this is what's used to seduce the men as well as seduce the woman. In other words, it's it's one particular type of magic that depends on the view. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, the effect, it depends on who is looking at it. And what do you look at it with? You look at it with your eye. So it seems like, well, Nikki Minaj, she's the new one coming in. So she may be the one that can be easy, easiestly, in that sense, associated with this. Now, why do we say this? So let's get back to the text. We're going to go to Yota, the Iota, right? And let's get back into the, the, the text right here. So as we go forward, what does it read? So we recognize that this word resemblance here, right, this word resemblance here, is really the word oin. And that oin has two primary um, meanings, according to the best um, resources out there on the biblical Masoretic traditional Hebrew, the strong concordance. We find that oin means I, and by analogy it means a fountain. You understand? It means a fountain, all right? So now we find that they have a resemblance that this is a feminine it, this thing that is coming, that is going forth. It's almost like what they broadcast. Moreover, and also, Now, it's interesting we want to note this, that the King James says resemblance, the Hebrew says I, 
And the Amharic, the royal Amharic, the Metaf Kedus of Negus Neges, of of the King of Kings, of Moan Besazem Negeda Yehuda Kadamawi, Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie I, elect of God, King of Kings of Ethiopia, the Metaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, the Revised Amharic Bible, the pure language says Bedelacho, which is interesting because Bedelacho is interpreted or translated as a wrongdoing. Now we just look at the the um the roots right here once again. You understand? You can see how that comes in by the third you understand the third um um interpretive applicative. In other words, when we now take the third of these affliction affliction, because that word means wrongdoing. So it will be interpreted that this is their wrongdoing. This is their wrongdoing in all of the earth, all over the world. You'll find that there's one easily recognizable symbol all over the world, then this is it. You understand? Then this is it. And then these two have become very easily associated. So this is exactly what Balaam this is this is the doctrine of Balaam. Remember in Revelation it speaks about Elzebel, it speaks about Jezebel, it speaks about Balaam. You understand that false prophet test. You understand that we that many would suffer this false prophet test. Right? This false prophet test. Interesting how we can, you know, reason on that right there and meditate on the possible um applications of that, both even picking sentences from the English prophet tests. You understand know about the prophet. You understand know not the prophet spiritually, but the prophet economically, the whole bling bling, this whole so it kind of began here a couple of years ago. You understand? Know it began with little Kim over here. And now you know, even that, that, that battle so called between the two. You understand know when little Kim is like, Give me my props, B I T C H that's interesting too. That word "bitch," you know, it's it's in the mysteries. It's it's very interesting, you know. The children of the bitch. That's part of this ancient kind of mythology that people. This is why Babylon wants don't want you to look at. Because when you start look at, you say, "Wait, I mean, if that was a fairy tale, it's like people are living this fairy tale today." You know, because John said that we there will be days, you know, that there will be days like these, and he said in the latter time we would perfectly. Understanding, he'll bring us back again. You remember that he'll bring us back, like we'll return to this this place. We'll return to this. It's very kind of cryptic because one say, "What does this mean?" But they'll return here, hither, return hither again. We're returning to this psychic kind of state. Maybe it's the Kasha. Who knows? But one thing the scripture was trying to tell us so. But here it says in their home, yeah, our, um Sasuna Meklit Anesut in the home the Ifemesferiawist Andi Tsait Tekemt Anabar. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. There was lifted up a talent of lead. And this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the Epha or the Eif. One thing we wanted to do that we didn't do um, previously, remember in, in the Mickelson, in the Word program, the other program that we, we, we've been using right here? Um, let's look up EF right here. and see. Yeah, they say it right here. Let's, let's bring this to size. They say it right here. You can see it where this is a little bit clearer. The only thing this one will have the Hebrew says, Afa. Afal is how they think it's pronounced, but we go to the Ethiopic, it will be Efa, right? Or shorten Efal, they say Afal, of Egyptian origin. So Macy, in the book of the beginning, is very right connecting that with the Hetep. It was the Hetep or the Hept, the, 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 the peace offering or the, the grain offering, the Hotep offering. So when you look in ancient Egypt, you'll see that many of those who are offering, bringing offerings, they're holding their hand, in their hands there's these cones. You know these cones, like a triangle? You understand? Almost looks like this very kind of pyramidical image. 
Because notice, this is not an Egyptian thing right here. The pyramid, yes, but this whole thing, you know, you don't see the eye of Ra in a triangle in ancient Egypt. I mean, come on, be real now. That's not in the art and facts. That is strictly a modern-day occult invention. And, and, and the purpose, basically, is what we are experiencing of Egyptian de derivation. So even the Afra is of Egyptian derivation. So we want to look at the Afra, we have to go back to Egypt. So therefore, we have the Hept or the Hetep, right? The Hetep offering of the Eve of the grain, right? And it looks like a little, it looks like, per it's like, little, like, like triangles, tri like cones, in a sense. So an Afra measure for grain, hence a measure in general afa divers measures so we just want to go there and to once again um repeat that the if afa or afa is of egyptian origin so here we have that there was lifted up a talon of lead and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the if or the afa you understand the ifa mesferia wist andit sate anaba Right now it says in verse eight. Get this in verse eight as we come down here to verse eight. Right in verse eight. Notice what it says in verse eight. It says, and he said, "Our son, yech kafat not aling, beif mesariyah wista talat ye er sasunema tegra be mesariyah af lai." And he said, this is wickedness. Whoa, this is wicked. That's what we say, right? Yeah, right? We say, yeah, man, look at that guy there. That guy there, wicked. <laughs> Blood. You know, and you remember back in the days, you know, said that about this gal, too. And this guy, wicked. And then all the women, you know, all the women started to say, wow, that's what you're like? So we're going to be these bad gal, these wicked gal. But John already beat you to the punch. You know what I'm saying? But there's grace before you feel the full blow of the punch. And he said, this is wickedness. This is wicked. Yehich kafat not. Or this she. This she is wicked. In other words, it will be a better trend. This she is wicked. You know what I'm saying? This she. And he cast it into the midst of the effa. So he cast this thing into the midst of of this measure, a particular measure. That's why we tell you that what you see on the pyramid, on the, on the Illuminati dollar, you know, say on this talisman, this is not an Egyptian angle pyramid. And those of you on to geometry, you you can see the angle is different than the. This is more like the Nubian pyramids, the ones in so-called modern day Sudan, which was lower uh, Ethiopia, that was lower Tobia. Upper Ethiopia is what's on the map today as Ethiopia. Upper Egypt, Lower Egypt, where you think they got that from? They got that from their mama. They got that from Ethiopia. But now, and so he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. You understand? He cast this this um, weight of lead. Tegara. Tegara. I got to Tegara. 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 It has something to do with here, too. You know what I'm saying? It has something to do with here. Now, remember the vid that we did for the Rihanna, Woman of Wickedness? Now, some people actually, you know, as a person, they, they don't have anything personal with none of these artists or whatnot. They just, you know, it's like, word to God, they go, they, they would go I. You know, and I and I, and many of us can say that, we pray that they wake up too before it's too late, and they turn state's evidence for the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. This is This is the good news for them. You understand? They know that they are in a situation. If they don't, well, then keep on. But anyway, still we pray for them, and we should pray for them. So we're not talking about that Rihanna is the most woman of wickedness over the woman of wickedness, but she's in that program, preset pattern. She don't even understand. She thinks, oh, I'm creative. Okay, yeah, but you create based on what they give you. You understand? Do something really out the box. You understand, know like about Ethiopia, Haile Selassie. You do some more Bob Marley stuff, and people start to chat you, chat you down, like they've done. You know, when she did the Bob Marley song, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't like Bob, of course, but people started. You see how the devils are out there? They said, "No, this is your preset programming." You know, 
Um, even Nicki Minaj, she did a little Rastafari, you know what I mean? But if they come too far out, you know what I mean? Roman, the Romans get them. Here, verse 9, Kuter Zetang says, I no chenim, I no chenim, anis che ayahu. Then I lifted I up mine eyes in their home and look, see, here it is. Who let setoch wetu? Two women came out. Now, I mean, I didn't put this together. I just got this off the Internet. You can look for it on the Internet. You know what I'm saying? I didn't put this particularly together. This is, how, this, is the, this is what came out. You know, this is what came out. This is what came up. Two women. Look at that. There's two women. There's a little Kim, which was yesterday's generation, so to speak. You know, the crack generation, the quick generation. They say this is the shortest the ones in this generation are going to live a short time because of so many factors. And all these factors, you've got to factor in the curse of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15 to 68, for disobedient to these people who think they're Gentiles, but they're actually lost sheeple. So you have to also factor that in. You know, but here it says, And looked, and behold, there came out two women, and the wind was in their wings, Right? I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking about that. Should we just read this this hareg, this portion right here? And nefasim be kinna for chacho nebere. You understand? And the wing and then the and the wind was in their wings. Let's look at this again. Well, maybe she don't have the wings here, but we know they did some album. You know, that's part of the whole thing. Uh, Beyonce, who's another one of these divas. There's probably seven of them, keeping in good measure. There probably seven of them. You know, we're saying, um, and probably the eighth, maybe somebody like Madonna. I, I'm not, don't don't quote me on that. Check it out because when you understand the mythology, the ancient mythology, you understand which the Bible is 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 speaking, is alluding to for us. But in that time, they understood the symbolism because it says, and the wind was in their wings. So it's almost like they're flying, they're moving. We've seen a lot of this in, like, videos, so forth and so on. For they had wings like the wings of a stork. Um, kinfochacha women, the shimala kinfoch neberu, right, neberu, right, not neberu, but neberu. And they lifted up the effa between the earth and the heaven. Ye'if meseriawinim, the midrinna. So they lifted this, 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 this if. The, 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 notice it says if, and then it says meseriawinem, which is like a measure, a, a measurement, right? Like a, a certain measurement, the measurement of if, the if measurement. They lift up this if me measurement where? Did they lift it up into heaven? Nah, they don't have that kind of power, really. They're earthbound beings. You understand? So, but they lifted up between where? Between earth and heaven. Now, that's interesting. They, they lifted this way up as far as they could lift it up. They lifted up this symbol. Now, we can look at this in some of the vids. We can look at this in, in, in certain ways like that. But we need to also understand what, this, what types of the ancient mythology are they speaking about. You see, the prophets were well familiar with this. So so they were probably figuring that, well, anybody who understands as much as we understand and people later on probably will know more. Little did, they, little did they know. You understand? Little did they know that people later on, even with Internet, choose to know less. You understand? Because they don't check these sort of things out. So the, this symbol was lifted up. You understand? Almost like as the god of the earth. You know? And it's a stork. Remember the whole thing about a stork? You know, they use the stork symbol in a lot of things. They say the baby comes by the stork, right? You know, and some of us used to, unfortunately, have to admit it, we used to be like either. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Don't, don't say you didn't at some time or another. Unless you were born in the country, you understand? Didn't believe that, that you know, from seeing all the stuff, you know, in the cartoons and stuff. And the baby must have came by. Unless somebody put you on to, you know what I'm saying? And back then, that they would say that was child abuse if you knew where babies came from. So they told you that a stork brought the baby. But here's the interesting thing, that the stork 
right, is in, according to the Hebrew, the Torah, the Orit, the stork is an unclean animal. So there must be some connection with the fact that it was a stork. It wasn't an eagle. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a hawk. It was a stork. So now, notice this right here when we go to verse verse, um, verse 10. I know we've been spending a, a moment on this whole Illuminati, evil eye, Buddha eye thing. There's a, a little bit more to come. You know, if if ones are willing and ones are able to receive it. Because once you have these elements, you know, and the Holy Spirit can even speak to you. Because cause now you're in the Word. Remember, this Word came through prophets who were guided by the Holy Spirit. So let's let's recognize that. You understand? If we want God's Spirit to guide us in these troublous times, we have to have regard to His Word. Then said I to the angel that talked with me, Whither do these bear the Epha or the Eve? Where Where are they going to carry it? Where do they take it, literally? You west to top. Where do they, you know, where do they take it, right? Whither, where they, right? Um, Asra'an, verse 11. Notice it has 11 too, which if you study it from numbers, all is numbers. And if you understand the biblical interpretation of numbers, the, 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 the science of Jah, then you begin to recognize it's interesting that it's 11 here too. Right, it's eleven. You know that number eleven, and we go to Genesis eleven. You understand? And eleven is like bankruptcy, but then they use eleven as the two pillars, like the whole Solomonic, um, Masonic thing. You know the temple. You know, and the whole nine one one. And we're gonna get into number eleven because uh, most folks only know what the Illuminati thinks. They don't know what John thinks. What does John think about it? So now you know what the Illuminati thinks. What does John think of the number eleven? What's the biblical? numerology of these numbers. It's very good to, you know, do a little research on the Internet and check out some of the different resources out there, you know, and just pray. I ask God to guide you in it. Arsum and he, besena or midarbeit, yisaru let zen, yuas tutal. Bete zegad jem gizei, mbeziya besifrao yinoral, aling. And he said to me, to build it an house in the land of Shinar. Remember I, told, I just said Shinar, and where do we find Shinar in the Bible? Shinar. Some say Shinar could be China. Shinar, China. Because it's, it's said they came from the east, right? China, right? China. I remember the whole dragon connection and stuff like that. And it shall be established and set there upon her own base. So we, we now live in a world where it's about, well, China is now the next superpower on the rise, and all the white folks that know anything are teaching their children Chinese and stuff like that, you know, to get ready for the new so-called world order, you know. And they're out there in Iraq, too, you know, the Americans, Babylon, they built the base. This is that same land of Sina or you understand, which probably might come from China in some sense, but it's saying that to build a base. Now, we said before that base, right, though it doesn't use the word um, maseret there, you understand, because it's um, there in the place that is prepared. And, and notice how the American, the United States snakes armies, they took over ancient Babylon. You know, ancient Babylon. Notice how NASA now has gone essentially offline, except at, at their own pleasure. They'll show you some things. Because now that they have private contractors doing it, you can't be looking at the NASA free videos and stuff up there because there's no law. They're not under any law or anything to really show you any of that. And they've been saying that people have been finding out too much about these angels, I mean, extraterrestrials out there, you understand, and they might put it together. But anyway, this this is this chapter right here, and we want to point to this right here again, but the main thing we want us to do is take you to the materials, 
you know what I'm saying, take you to these partic particular materials here um, and to actually show you, you know, within the scriptures and also how to, if one is interested and one should be interested if they want to know the truth, to study these things and actually, you know, like say, click here, this is the Yota, uh, IOTA program, click here, and then as you can see right here, we have the Amharic on top, we have the King James Version, then we have the study right there, then we can click on the various words here, and you see how it came up over here, Oin, this is the, the Amharic Bible software, you understand, that uses the, the, the um, authorized um, Amharic text, or the Metzav Kedus, or the King of Kings, the, the pure Amharic, not this other bootleg thing that's going on, which actually the Pope and was behind this other Amharic Bible that's out there. It's an interesting translation, but it's nowhere it compares, you understand, to the pure language, you know. And But um, be that as it may, in this right here, we're in this program, the Word program right here, and we're still seeking to get this utilities page so that some of the software, you know, it's out there. You can search for it, but we'll try to pull some things together in due time. But anyway, you can look here. Also, you can see how we pulled in those particular numbers earlier. We showed you going up to the tools. You know, when you go to the tools up here and um, you go on Bible view, you see those numbers there. And when we click on um, show Strong's number, we're going to take it off right now. And you can see the numbers go away. And if you want to put the numbers on right there, Bible view options, you know, you might have to click over here. Like we click right here, right, for Strong's numbers. Then we click um, check the box. And then we check OK. And the numbers come back. And when you scroll over these numbers, you can see some of the key Hebrew words. And I actually also see it in the Hebrew, too which is also uh, an extra, a extra benefit for the diligent student. So this I, this Illuminati I, so-called, this image, this witchcraft, Jah has already checked it in the scriptures. And where we really need to get to, I think I, I closed that search up before, but it's, it's the human liberty. In fact, um, Let's see if we can just find that one once again before we close out of this. This particular symbol, you probably have seen it out there. It's very interesting. It's where the whole thing is turned upside down. You see, the truth can do that. The truth can turn all this upside down because part of the magic, the great part of the magic is what you believe. You know, that's why they have to put out a lot of this, 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 um, um, information and misinformation and disinformation you know there's a difference what's the difference between misinformation and dis disinformation you know people say it's the same thing oh really not you know so we have these sort of pictures here right here then you have another level of this I representation because it's a different form remember in the Hebrew it doesn't just say ein but it actually says oinim you understand? Or oinam, oinam, if you read, if you read the, the vowels like that. And so we have this right here. So you see this 666, you know, this kind of hand sign, which some have interpreted to be 666. It's definitely true that they like doing this sort of stuff. You know what I mean? They, they must like doing this. Um, you know, they tell us we belong to something. Don't you want to belong to it also? But they're not telling us exactly what they belong to. You know what I mean? Um, maybe some of them don't even know what they belong to. So here we have this symbol here, which is an interesting um, symbol right here. Um, um, a new coeptus announcing the birth of, right? Human libertas or human liberty. In a sense, this is a translation, a way of saying human rights. You understand? Human rights. It's not some singular left eye, you know, some Buddha eye looking over everything, but it's, it's basically mine. It's, it's man, you know, as he was meant to be. You understand? Free. 
So that's going to be that on this particular subject matter, you know, um, right there. The next part that we probably want to connect with this, and for those who want to study a little bit more up on this, um, check out, uh, what is it, Ezekiel 37, I think Ezekiel 37, the Valley of the Dry Bones, because what does this, remember it says this is their image, and maybe we'll close out on this, this is their image in all the earth. This is truly what their image is in all the earth. A bunch of skulls. You ever see those places like in Europe in some of their uh, um, churches? I guess they, they had Church of Satan then back in that time before the one in California. But in their churches they have a whole bunch of skulls. And they're like, yes, this is where our monks and the, the monks were. And then you see all the skulls. And this is the bones of the holy monks. Right? And you see just a bunch of skulls. You have to ask, where's the rest of the body? Then you go to walk around the church. Well, you, I wouldn't suggest to really go there. You understand? Because you see uh, there's some videos out there that actually show you these places. But you always see those skulls. And when you see the skulls, you have to ask yourself, my God, all those were human beings. You know what I mean? All those were human beings, like yourself and myself. You understand? And and many of them, they admit they were the holy ones. You know what I mean? And you should say, is the Pope skull in there? Is any of your, is any of your, um, what they call cardinals? Is there cardinal skulls in there? Of course not, because they're not the holy people. You understand? So right here, look right here. We're gonna close off this 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 hour right here with this. A tinbete, his, his zikiel or his el his zikiel. Um, Ezekiel, right, um, where it says, "Besamal will mention this to us how to unlock." Yeah, Ezekiel Harim Ej belaye nabr. Ezekiel Harim be menfesu awet ain at into chim be molubata shelik o mekakel anoring anoring. Um, it says the hand. The hand of the Lord, of Yahweh, was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, in the spirit of the Lord, not in the spirit of a church or a spirit of a preacher or a pastor, but in the spirit of John, in the spirit of Yah, in the spirit of Yahweh, in the spirit of Abba, in the spirit of the Father, the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMoshiach, and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Right? Now, there's so much more. We just want to make sure that it was chapter Ezekiel chapter 37. Now, you see where all this, where all this disobedience and rebellion leads to against Jah. You know what I'm saying? You see what false religion, false gods, leads to this is what it leads to just like you look at those people's skulls that could be your skulls or skulls of those whom you love you know what I'm saying John loved I and I and therefore he sent his only begotten son that that bothers the demons when you say only begotten the stupid people the, the people who have been deceived by the demons when you say something like that there's many ways to God I mean who's telling you that the demons that tell you that they're gods they're saying there's many ways. Well, well, Yeshua says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But if you choose to go the other way, this is where it ends up, and this is unfortunately where a lot of the lost sheep are right now. And that's why you see all them wearing these, these, these deaths, wearing death, skull and bones all over. You know what I'm saying? Because that shows you this is their eye. No, no, they got the chemtrails up here too. Ain't that something in this art? It's just like what Ezekiel's talking about. The hand of the Lord, that the Yad of Yahweh, the Yad Vashem, the Yad of Yahweh took him out to this region. You know and we could think of the Ethiopian Holocaust then. But what about the Holocaust that's happening right now? Brothers and sisters, watch and pray always. And pray that you be found worthy to stand before the Son of Man. I am. Ras Yadinos Teferi Wendem Yadin, your brother Ras Iadonis Tafari of the Line of Jews Society, 
of his imperial majesty. Watch and pray, people. Shalom.